Welcome to the Wondrous History Podcast and to a new episode where I wanted to just uh, explore for that bit longer the practicalities and how AI can be used when discussing history. And of course, this is a discussion about uh, chat GPT, but also various different other forms um, of, of AI online. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to please hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel a lot. So let us resume. So we've talked in the previous episodes uh, about questions uh, which I covered throughout the podcast. And what I wanted to see right now is what ChatGPT thinks about some practical aspects when we talk about history. Can you recommend me some books? Can I use ChatGPT for essay writing? And some of the responses are quite uh, interesting, if not put there on purpose because there might be a concern, ethical uh, and also legal, I would say, if it came to things like plagiarism, self-plagiarism and all of that. So while ChatGPT can answer some questions, and I, I asked a very simple one, such as who are the main rivals of the Venetian Republic? And the the AI responds, the main rivals of the Venetian Republic were the Ottoman Empire, the Papacy, the Republic of Genoa, the King of Kingdom of Naples, the Duchy of Milan, and the Holy Roman Empire. All true throughout different times in history. Note that it's not as, because this is another version, it's not as complex as the answers in the previous one. I suppose if you paid the entire fee or sum, which would be about probably $20 a month, you get much better uh, results. But I did ask ChatGPT, for example, can I use it for essay writing? And the answer was quite prompt. It said, no, ChatGPT, and it explain, ex explains the abbreviation, generative pre-trained transformer, is a type of natural language processing technology that is used to generate human-like text. It is typically used for tasks such as summarizing articles, generating questions, and completing sentences. GPT is not suitable for writing essays, as it cannot provide the same level of critical thinking and analysis as a human can. Then I thought, Fair enough. So I asked the question, can ChatGPT help one with learning history? The answer was quite similar. It said, quote, no, ChatGPT is not designed to help with learning history. It is a natural language processing tool that can help you generate natural sounding sentences and paragraphs based on your input. For help with learning history, you may want to look into educational resources as textbooks, online courses, or tutors. But when asking another follow-up question, as I did throughout this experiment, I asked, how advanced will ChatGPT get? And the answer was, ChatGPT is expected to become increasingly sophisticated over time. As more data is collected and algorithms are improved, the chatbot will become better at understanding natural language and responding with more accurate and helpful answers. It's possible that ChatGPT will become so advanced that it will be undistinguishable from a real human conversation partner. Meaning, based on the previous answer, that at the moment, we're not there yet. You shouldn't rely on this. This is very much still a, um, a rough tool that needs to be refined, needs to be added, needs to be improved. Yet, there are some elements which I think at the moment you can actually use ChatGPT for. For example, you become out of nowhere interested in the history of um, 16th century Spain. Let's be more precise. The, the, the second half of the 16th century in Spain and the rule of Philip II of Spain. So you ask ChatGPT, can you recommend me some history books about Philip II of Spain? Make sure you mention Spain because I didn't and it gave me a complete omelette of an answer. And it comes with a top 10 of some very, very good books from some very influential authors, some of my personal favorites and um, idols of mine, such as Geoffrey Parker, Philip II of Spain, The Making of a King by him, 
or Philip II of Spain, the empire builder, uh, but also other offers like, uh, apart from Geoffrey Parker, like Henry Kamen. It is a bit standardized because if I look at the top 10 over there, uh, the first three letters, first four letters are Philip II of Spain. So it obviously goes throughout like a list from Amazon, Google, whatever, and it just gets that. The only one that I got in the top 10 there is the Revolt of the Netherlands 1555-1609 by jo Geoffrey Parker. A very good book, by the way, if you want to learn a bit also about the prelude to the 30 years war but we'll get more into that over the next series over the next episodes in a few months to come so more towards the end i did ask a question which i always think of it as being very important especially when talking to folks who have done degrees or um, research more into the stem field and um, i asked is history one of the most important subjects for one to learn and the answer was quite good. It, was, it said, yes, learning about history is one of the most important subjects for one to learn. History can provide valuable insight into the present as well as offer valuable lessons on how to make informed decisions in the future. It can also provide an understanding of different cultures and how they interact. Furthermore, it can provide a greater appreciation of the past, which can help shape the future. And for that, th there was always a question when I was asked, when I did decide to do a degree in uh, history, I did one in a joint degree, history and archaeology at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. So I asked a quick question, what can you do with a history degree? And the answer that I got said that a history degree opens up a variety of career options. Graduates may pursue a career as a historian or archivist, a museum curator, teacher, librarian, lawyer, journalist, public relations specialist, web content manager, or even a political analyst. A history degree also provides a strong foundation for further study in fields such as law or public policy. And with that, I will um, not abandon I will still come back to the subject whenever something will be maybe added to ChatGPT as a tool once it becomes a bit more refined. I am very curious to play with this uh, instrument as the answers provided are interesting and it, you can see very uh, contrasting differences based on your location, the algorithms in your country where you're accessing um, ChatGPT. And for one last question, and this is because we finally are coming back to the uh, series which we were on, the Traveler Diaries of the Mediterranean in the 16th century series. I asked the question, which is very specific, uh, what is Excepta Cipria and who wrote it? Uh, and I got the answers. Excepta Cipria is a collection of excerpts and fragments from ancient Greek and Latin authors compiled in the 10th century by Constantine, uh, I'm not even going to try to mention that name, a Byzantine emperor. It is an important source for the history of the Byzantine Empire, as well as for the history of classical Greece and Rome. And here we can see that, yes, that is the case, but there's also the a uh, great document looked uh, by myself and many others uh, for research, but also for this podcast and this series, which is the document looking at the uh, travels of many individuals, merchants, soldiers, diplomats, um, into the history of Cyprus, pre-Venetian, post-Venetian and Ottoman. Of course, I am talking about the book originally published in 1895 by Claude de Laval Cobham, um, and it is one of my favorite books and a, basically the foundation for this series. So thank you so much for listening to this very semi-spontaneous series on ChatGPT. We are going to return to a few more episodes, and then I will want to finally uh, proceed with the uh my take, some of my takes on the history of the Thirty Years' War, uh, start 
slow, start small with, for example, talking about my favorite books and sources, and then um, maybe make a chronological history. I don't know. We'll, we'll see when it comes to that. And when it comes to the history of the papacy and the history of the popes, there's there'll always be time to return to that. I do want to make a step from the 16th century to the 17th century. That was the subject. Uh, that was my special subject in uh, fourth year, so dissertation and exams, and something uh, a topic that I am fast more than fascinated about. So stay tuned about that. There may be some something coming with the Venetian interdict uh the long turkish war we'll see about that there's plenty that doesn't have to be like a direct chronology we can always come back to these things but yeah thank you for listening to the podcast make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and until the next time all the best